We've taken questions from people uh, in writing, and so what we're going to do is we're going to read them off and have uh, you answer them. I'll start off with the first one. This question is from Muriel Feingold. She said, ask, We've organized a local grassroots initiative for substantive health care reform, single payer options, and want to know how we can broaden its reach and get the maximum impact in the decision making process. It's a great question, and uh, I think um, uh, you know I touched on this a little bit earlier. There is a site on WhiteHouse.gov where you can directly um, provide your policy suggestions, um, and uh, you know I encourage folks to do that. The other thing that I encourage folks to do is to reach out to your member. Um, Congress is drafting this legislation now, and you should let them know this is what we expect to be inside there. Uh, from a tactical standpoint, you know we have a host of tools online, uh, MyVo, uh, which I think many of you are familiar with. Is a platform that you can organize, you know, frankly, whatever you would like. Uh, you know, there's there is a a, a uh, uh, set of uh, you know terms of use, but they're very broad and they're very lenient, and, and generally uh, will let people use that platform uh, for whatever they would like. So, from a tactical standpoint, I'd say use the tools on our website. Uh, from suggesting uh, to the people the powers that be, I would go to WhiteHouse.gov and I would talk to your your elected representatives, your federal elected uh, representatives. Great. All right. Our next question is from Cindy Rowe from Brookline. I'd like you to, uh, to reflect on how the, the local Democratic Party operations work with Obama. Do we merge, function as the National Democratic Party and, and OFA? Work, do, do, do we work together? And how do we work cooperatively and not competitively? That's a great question. And uh, one of the very first things that um, uh, that I did that in my current role once we came up with what we thought was a, a structure is I got on 50 conference calls uh, with uh, the state party chair in 50 states and just basically laid out what we have envisioned for organizing for America in that respective state and frankly how we can work together. In many states, we are actually housed out of the state party. Um, and you know, we're not, we're not looking to uh, uh, you know, take over uh, state parties or, or, or you know, um, fill the, the role that the state party has. Our priorities support the president's agenda. Now, in 99% of the time, that's exactly what the state party is doing as well. And a lot of the folks who are uh, part of the uh, Organizing for America are also on the central committee uh, of, of the local county for, you know, on the executive board of the state party. So there, in my sense, there, there isn't much difference. Now, I think especially here in Massachusetts, given that, uh, you know, all of your delegation is, is generally supportive of what the president's doing, but that's not the case in some other states. So in some of those states, uh, there's going to be some uncomfortable moments, frankly. There just will. Uh, but you all should know that Organizing for America, nothing is going to uh, take uh, the, the number one slot in our priorities as far as supporting the president's agenda. And that means that we're going to do that regardless of where we're at or who we're talking to. Nothing will come in front of supporting the president's agenda. And, um, uh, and sometimes that uh, will lead to an uncomfortable conversation. What we've stressed over and over and over again, though, is communication. Uh, you know, most state party chairs and the executive director, you know, say, hey, as long as you let us know what's going on, you know, we understand what your mission is here. We just want a heads up. So that's what we're trying to do in all these states is just provide folks the information up front so that we're not um, doing anything that may, uh, you know, be uncomfortable down the road. But again, nothing's going to take the place uh, in our minds of, of uh, uh, supporting the president's agenda that's our number one priority we want input in that agenda yeah and i think again you should go to whitehouse.gov and i would also talk to uh, your members of congress if you have a specific policy suggestion you know certainly around health care i'm happy to talk to you about it uh, but the the best way to do that right now is to go to, to, to whitehouse.gov and there's a place for you to offer your policy thoughts thank you this question is from Tad Crawford from West Tisbury, Massachusetts. Does participation in OFA and concurrent board membership on nonprofit of 501c3 is dealing with the same issues put in jeopardy the non-tax status of those organizations? I don't know whether you can answer that. But well, no, that's a good question, and, and frankly, it's uh, it's not an easy one to answer. I mean, it really depends. It really depends on what we're doing. So I would I would suggest it certainly. It would not affect organizing for America, but you know, in some rare instances, it might affect the C3. So uh, I would just make sure that you talk to an attorney or, or someone who has that complaints background so that you don't jeopardize that tax status. 
Thank you. This uh, question is from Elizabeth Marcus from Newburyport. What is the administration doing and what should local communities do to organize a response to the upcoming challenge of fossil fuel supply depletion? That's a good question. Well, uh, there is uh, energy legislation right now going through the House, um, and uh, uh, I've been sort of out of the loop, uh, but I know that they're talking about getting that passed. Uh, it may have already gotten out of committee, I don't know for sure, but uh, it should be in this next week here. Um, I haven't seen what that piece of legislation looks like, but I think it is a significant step forward. Um, uh, so, you know, what, what the President has talked about over and over again, uh, and, and the reason why he's pushing healthcare, energy, um, and, and, you know, will push education uh, in the very near future is that to move our economy forward in the next century, we have to be, we should be the leaders of creating these green jobs. And uh, uh, so, you know, as the President starts talking more and more about his energy policies, or at least his principles for what the House and Senate uh, start debating, um, I think he'll lay out very clearly that in order for us to be uh, the job innovator moving forward uh, in the 21st century, we have to be the leaders on green technology. And um, I think both the House and Senate bill hopefully will have a very, very strong incentive program for that. 